Hello there, welcome back. Today we are looking to finish our BIOS bootloader uh, by switching to long mode and then handing off the execution to our kernel. So let's look at what we need to do that. Here we have in the Intel uh, developer manual, we have five steps that are needed to switch from protected mode to long mode. So we are going to follow those. So this is our recipe. Let's get cooking. All right, so I guess the first thing we can do or we should do is um, go here, add a print to indicate it. All right, so I guess the first thing we need to do since we are going to jump into our uh, kernel, um, I'm just going to add a printf uh, statement here that says something like uh, something really uh, bad happened. Um, something like this, just so we know that if we see this statement here printed, we failed jumping into our kernel. And here I'm just gonna um, create a function that I'll call um, sw switch long mode, for example. Um, we're gonna see if we need to pass it arguments i think we are going to need to pass it arguments we are at least going to need to pass it um a pointer to our page map and the kernel entry point to jump to but yeah we'll, we'll come back for for uh, for that in a bit um so first thing we need to do is we need to go here to assembly helper and declare void um, switch uh, long mode. I think we've called that. And here we can go and create public um, switch long mode. And of course, we can uh, also create it uh, switch long mode here. There we go. Um, just put in a red for now. Oh, right. So I went ahead and copied um, our instructions here uh, from the uh, Intel developer, Developers Manual. And I've also copied the uh, structures um, of the bit fields or the uh, control registers that we are going to use. So let's, um, let's start. So first of all, we need to, um, so starting from project mode, disable paging by setting, uh, setting the uh, PG bit of um, CR0. So if we go back here, PG bit is bit 31. So we need to set that to zero. So we basically need to end it with uh, all ones and then a zero in the um, 31st position, right? So we are going to first move um, into EAX uh, RC0, uh, or sorry, so CR0. Um, and then we are going to um, end EAX with a value. And to compu compute that value, let's bring out the calculator. Right, so we want all ones. Um, so we know that this would be FFFF, -F -F -F, right? except that we want this 31st position to be a zero. So we are going to end it with this value here. Oops. Um, so 0x7ff, there we go. And after this, we are going to set back. So move CR0, EAX. So this basically is our first step done. So let's uh, mark it as done here. Right, then we should look at the next step. Uh, next step says that we need to enable the physical address extensions, PAE, by setting the PAE bit um, of CR4. Um, if we look at CR4, um, PAE is bit five, right? But since we are doing CA, uh, CR4 stuff, we might as well enable a few other things that we need or we are going to need, for example, um, this here for um, FX save, FX restore, 
Um, and this one here for uh, support for unmasked SIMD uh, operations. Um, since we want them. Right, we might also enable this um, FSGS base, but for now, let's just keep it simple and just go ahead and do these ones. So we need the bits five, as well as nine and 10 to be set. So if we um, go back to our calculator here, and we need to set uh, bits five, as well as well as nine and 10. So this is the value that we are going to um, and it with, so 620, um, right. So here, let's do the same thing, pretty much move to AAX um, CR4, then uh, we then and AAX with 0x620, and when, then we move back uh, to CR4 uh, AAX. Right, uh, so that's second step done. So let's mark it as done. And now we need to load CR3 with our base address or our physical address of the, um, basically the page map that we've created. Um, right, so here we might want to, um, actually, uh, yeah, we want to set these to one. So we are going to need to uh, order that. Yeah, so here we need to think a bit about this because we don't yet have the CR3 uh, or rather the page map address here. So to do that, we might need to go here and take that address. So I'll take it as a U32 um, and I'll call that page map address, right? Um, and that means that we are going to have our address in our stack, kind of like we had here. So we are going to access it by doing uh, this this kind of thing, right? Um, so let's go ahead and uh, actually let's let me just do this. Okay, let me just copy this, bring it up here, so that we can have it. Um, right. So here we are going to move into EAX again, the value of um, EBP. So I guess this would be EBP plus uh, the size of one pointer, which is our red address since we are calling this um, this function. And we haven't done any, um, we haven't done any, um, basically frame set up here because we are not expecting to go back. Um, so un unlike um, something like this function here where we actually do the um, frame setup and we push stuff into EBP and stuff like that, here we haven't touched the frame. So we are still operating on the um, stack frame of, the, of our caller basically. Um, except that the caller push, pushed their uh, re return address uh, on our stack. Um, right, so move EAX, uh, the value there, and then we should just do a move uh, CR3, uh, yes, that's it, EAX. Uh, okay, so with this, I believe this is also done. And then we need to enable uh, the long mode. So basically this field here is LME. Um, this is long mode enable, and I think we have it somewhere here. Um, yeah, there we go. So it's bit eight of this uh, EFER uh, register. Uh, EFER is extended uh, feature enable register, I believe. Uh, right, and since we are already doing this uh, changes to EFER register, we might as well set this bit here to enable syscalls. Um, since we are going to need those on our uh, kernel. So let's go to our um, calculator again and uh, set bit zero and bit eight. That should be 101. Yes, it is. 
Okay, so let's let's do that. So the first thing we need to know is um, actually this ether here is what we call a uh, what is called a MSR or a um, model specific register. It means that um, we need to access it in a bit of a specific way. So this MSR here has this address, which is um, this one here, I believe, zero, 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 yeah. It looks pretty good. Uh, and the way we are going to read or write to it, or read and write to it, is by doing uh, using this read uh, MSR uh, and write MSR instructions. And the way these instructions work is they expect in ECX, uh, ECX to have the address of the MSR we want to read. Um, so this, and then we are going to read it and we should have in EAX and EDX. So EDX would be the, so basically read, read MSR, if I just do this here, is going to read it into EDX. EAX, right? So EDX would be the uh, higher uh, four bits, uh, four bytes, and EAX will contain the lower four bytes. But since we are only interested in changing um, basically these bits here are in the lower bytes, so we are just going to uh, touch uh, EAX but not EDX. Right, so we are going to OR EAX with our value that we've computed, which is 101. And we are going to then write uh, write MSR. Uh, and that should be pretty much it for this. So let's mark this as done also. And now we just have this last step here, which would basically um, so we will enable paging and what we are expecting is that the CPU will then switch to long mode and then it will set uh, this bit here, which is bit 10, long mode active. And if we do this, we should effectively be in long mode. So we just need to do a long jump and then we would be in long mode. Um, right, so let's do that. We need to set B, uh, PG0 to that value and to do that actually let's uh, go back to CR0 because uh, I forgot a few things so we are going to set paging but we are also going to set a few other things so I've marked um, the bits of interest with a star uh, we are going to set MP, we are going to set EM we are going to set TS and ET and an E and we are going to also disable um, cache and disable um, write through just so we can have a clean transition to our kernel and then we can re-enable them um, afterwards in our kernel. Right, so let's do that. Actually, uh, before we do that, let's just compute the value that we are going to need. So we want uh, bit 1 MP, we want 2 EM, 3 ETS. Uh, four, um, sure, four and five, and then we want 29, 30, and 31. Actually, we might not need extension type and numeric error for now, so we might or might not set them. Um, yeah, I'm leaning towards not setting them for now, so let's um, do this. We need to set, um, so we need to first read, um, so EAX we move CR0, and then we are going to OR EAX with our value, so it's E000 E, and then we are going to move to CR0, our new value in EAX. Right, and with this we can actually go ahead and jump, uh, do a jump, so um, we know that we should do this, and we need to jump to, um, I guess, some label here, long mode, uh, and I'll just create right here. 
long mode. Um, oops, there we go. So here in this long mode, uh, we obviously need to switch to 64-bit assembly. So we are going to use the um, U64 um, directive. And here what we need to do, so um, let's just plan this out. So we need the kernel entry point. So kernel entry point. Um, and we just need to jump to it. So basically uh, jump uh, to kernel entry point. So now the question is, where do we get the kernel entry point? Um, and the answer is fairly simple. So we just need to get from somewhere here. So U32 um, kernel entry point. Um, I guess that looks okay. So if I just copy that and put it here, that should be okay. Um, right, so we have our kernel 32, uh, or our kernel endpoint as a U64. That means that we are going to actually need to read it on the stack, from the stack, basically. Um, the only problem is, um, I think we are going to have to debug this to actually see how it looks on the stack, and then we'll go back and put the uh, actual address here. So let's imagine we have our stack containing our value. So we just need to basically do a pop uh, to basically take it from the stack. Um, or we can do a move. Uh, so this would be move um, RAX, and this would be a keyword um, EBP plus something. Uh, so let's do 0C for now, since that's what, where I'm expecting it to be, but we'll see. Um, and this would basically load a keyword from that address, and here we just need to do a, um, so jump RIX, right. And to avoid us having to do a ret, since we, actually, we'll leave the ret there, just in case um, something goes wrong and we mess up things. Um, right, so let's build this. Actually, before we need to build this, we should also do um, we should also pass it the arguments here. Uh, totally forgot about that. Uh, so the arguments we need is so kernel space um, address space root. Okay, that's good. It's a u32, I believe. Um, is it? Okay. Um, and we also need, so kernel uh, info, I believe, dot entry point. Yeah. And this one is a U64. This one is a U32. Cool. cool. So we just need to include, um, oops, uh, include, what's it called? ASM um, helper dot H and it should be happy. Cool. Cool, so with this, we just need to build it and see what we get. All right, so let's start GDB. Um, and uh, no, target remote three, four. Um, and of course, I'm not running it yet, so that explains this. Right, so it's connected, and now we can go ahead and load our um, symbols from our file, and we can set a breakpoint at main.c line, I believe, 39. Um, 39. So let's continue. Uh, okay, so we have our line 39. First thing we need to do is check the values on um, kernel space um, address space root. 
So that's uh, 6800. And we are also going to get the value of, um, so kernel info, I believe, dot entry point. Right, so now that we have those two values, we are just going to step into that. Um, and we are going to land somewhere here in the assembly. Um, so let's take a look at our stack first. Uh, we can see that in our stack, EPP plus zero is the return address, which is pointing to C main plus 155. And then we have this value here at EPP plus four, which is um, 6800, which as we've seen is our address space root. And then we'll have at EBP plus eight and EBP plus C, we have two halves or the two halves of our uh, kernel entry point. So we have the upper half here and the lower half here, which basically is uh, this value here. Right, so let's uh, next instruction this and see what we get. So here we can see that EAX has been loaded with 17, which was the value of C0. Actually, we can do reg C0 and see the value. So C0 has um, 17. And if we take also a look at C4, C4 has value zero. Okay, so let's um, do next instruction again. This here would end EX with um, all zeros, which basically would do nothing because EX has a value that um, with which the uh, PG bit was not set. So we do nothing here. And then we are going to set back EAX to CR0, which also would be a pretty much a no op. And we can check that we still have the same value there. Cool. So next would be we are going to load um, CR4 into EAX, um, I believe. Um, yeah, there we go. So CR4 into EAX, and we've seen that um, if we go back and do CR4, CR4 is zero. So now we are going to uh, or EAX with the value uh, 620, which we've computed. And then we are going to move uh, that EAX value into CR4. So let's check that that's been done. And it was cool. So next we are going to try to read from our um, stack the address of our um, page map. So let's do that. And we should see it here in EAX, and that's not the correct value. Um, hold on, what are we trying to read? We are trying to read EBP plus four. Okay, we haven't created a, um, we have not created a new stack frame. So indexing with EBP will not work because we don't have a reference EBP that points at the zero of our stack frame. Right, so let's fix that. All right, so let's fix that. We are going to push um, EBP, and then we are going to uh, move into EBP uh, ESP so that we create a new stack frame. Um, right, and with this, we should uh, probably um, increase or increment that by the size of EBP, which is four bytes, and um, this one here would need also to be incremented by four bytes. So I'm guessing this would be um, direct 10 uh, from C. I guess that makes sense. All right, so let's build this again and uh, try to debug it again. All right, so we are back here. Let's source this um, file and let's set a breakpoint at, uh, I think we've called it switch long mode. Yeah, right. Okay, so here we are. And this time we are going to set up a um, stack frame just so we can have a nice reference for our um, 
parameters. We could actually have reference them by doing uh, ESP plus things, but yeah. So, okay, so we have a new stack frame here. Um, so let's see, EBP points to this address here. And let's see where our parameters are. So, okay, so 6800 is our um, page map um, address, and it's at EBP plus eight, as we can see here. And then we have our um, at EBP plus 10, we have our um, basically kernel um, entry point. So now we should be fine. So let's just go ahead and skip a few of these things. So here we loaded CR0 into, uh, or sorry, um, CR4 into EAX. So it should be somewhere around here-ish. And if we go ahead and go next. Um, so we are at, um, or in that EX with the value and then now we should be moving it to CR4. Let's, um, let's check um, CR4. Yeah, so we have the correct value there. And now we are going to load um, the EBP plus eight into EAX and we should expect 6800, which is our correct value. Cool. And now we should move that to CR3, I believe. Um, yeah, so we are executing this instruction here to CR3. Actually, before we do that, let's just take a look at CR3 and it contains zero. So let's next instruction and then take a look at CR3 again. All right, so CR3 now points to our correct uh, page map, which is cool. Uh, right, so now we have CR3 pointing to our page map. We should now load the um, MSR, um, the EFER uh, MSR. So let's uh, do that. And we put in, we are putting in ECX uh, the address of the MSR, and then we should um, call read MSR now. And that basically loads into EAX and EDX the um, eight bytes of the MSR. And now we are going to um, basically or EAX with the value, hex value 101. Um, there we go. So that we enable the um, longer mode and we enable uh, syscalls. And if we next instruction that we should do write MSR. Um, right, uh, not sure if we can see Ether here. Oh, we can. All right, so here we are going to move uh, CR0 into EX again, and we are going to um, OR it with the values to enable paging. Um, so let's uh, do next instruction. Uh, yeah. There we go. So here we have ORD um, CR0 with that value. So now we have to write it back to, um, to CR0, basically. And with this, we have written it back to CR0. And let's take a look at CR0. And we have the actual value there, which is cool. Right, so now the issue we have is that our code is becoming garbage because we have jumped into, um, we are basically in long mode. So we just need to do the jump. And once we do the jump, we should be in long mode. Here we can see that we have popped, uh, or we have moved something from the stack to EAX, but it's not the correct value for some reason. Right, so we just need to address this and then we'll be we'll be good to go, I think. Oh, right. Well, this needed a bit more thinking than usual to, to make work. Um, actually, I had a weird issue that I spent quite a bit of time to figure out, which is um, I had page faults 
at this instruction here, just as we, uh, just after we set CR0, enabling the uh, long mode, uh, the very first instruction before after that uh, had actually a page fault. And after a bit of uh, debugging, what I found found out is that when we do, um, so let me go here, uh, VMM, let's see. Um, so somewhere here, when we create the address space, we allocate an address that's not page aligned. And we know that the CR3 register wants a, a, a page aligned um, address, otherwise it doesn't work. So that was mistake number one. And then mistake number two was actually, um, since we want to jump into long mode, we need a GDT entry for long, long mode. So um, I went ahead and created a GDT entry for long mode. The only difference between predicted mode and long mode is this byte here. So uh, these bytes here get these values here. So this byte is the byte that contains the uh, G, D and L flags as well as the upper bits of the limit. Um, and the difference is that for protected mode, we have the G uh, and D flags set and L flags and L flag unset. Whereas for long mode, we want to have the G and L flag set and D flag unset. So that's the only difference here. And once I did that, then uh, it pretty much was uh, working fine. So I went ahead and changed a few things. Uh, I noticed that the move RX that I had here before uh, was not working. So what I did is I um, tried to, uh, so actually this should go after that, uh, try to load the addresses, the two halves of the uh, entry point to two registers, these two bit registers, and then push them onto the stack so that they can uh, be together on the stack so that we can just pop them uh, at once. So let's rebuild this and try it. Right, so here we are on the uh, switch code. So let's uh, go through the, this fairly quickly. Um, so here we are setting the uh, CR3. And if we check CR3, we should have a page aligned address, which is the case. Um, so let's set the ether uh, and let's check that it's getting set. That's true. And now let's set CR0 to actually enable the um, long mode. And here we can see that it is enabled. So if we take a look at CR0, we are setting the value that we are expecting. And if we take a look back to Ether, we should see, yeah, so we have the CPU doing something there. Right, so let's try to move the two addresses from the stack. EBX looks okay. And RDX looks okay, so let's push them both on a stack. And um, yeah, let's see what we get. Right, so here we are on the pop RX instruction. So let's pop RX. And as a matter of fact, we have the correct address. And if we try to uh, just dump that address, Oh, um, I think I know why. Uh, I think I know why. Um, this address is not being mapped. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's just uh, jump into it. And I expect that we are going to see um, in the uh, QMU log that we get a page fault. So let's, uh, let's jump into that instruction. And let's see here. What do we have? Uh, actually, I think we need to... Um, there we go. So once we execute that, um, if we go up here, you can see that we get a new uh, 0xe exception, hardware exception, and uh, 0xe is, of course, page fault. 
uh, we can see here that the address, the faulty address is our address. Um, and yeah, so let's just go ahead and map it. Uh, actually, I've unmapped it for uh, testing reasons. So let's go ahead and remap it. Right, so let's try this again. Um, so I'll just speed through these instructions, push and pop. And then let's try to um, All right, so now we actually have, um, oops, uh, there we go. So now we actually have something that looks like our function, uh, five, five. I think that's, yeah, that's the uh, stack creation and stuff like that. So that looks like our function. And if we, of course, jump into that, then we can see that, yeah, it's push, move, and stuff like that. So 5.5 five is push RBP. And uh, yeah, so this is our kernel. So now we are actually executing our kernel. Well, that was it. We have officially finished our BIOS bootloader. It was a long journey, but we learned quite a bit along the way. And what's coming will not be less interesting, that I can guarantee. So next time, we are going to take a look at the side quest, UEFI bootloading. And actually to make things a bit more interesting, I I am considering, I am actually thinking about using a language that's not C for that. Um, I have a few languages I'm considering, a uh, few languages I'm interested in learning. Um, but yeah, I think it will be a great learning experience for me. So if you have any suggestions about what language you want to see, let me know in the comments. As always, support the channel by clicking a few buttons and until next time, see ya, bye.